Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Renee Yates, and I have the honor of being the director of the Office of Army Cemeteries. This is the sixth year the Army has had the privilege of supporting the return of children from the Carl Barracks Post Cemetery. Over the past two weeks, the Office of Army Cemeteries, in partnership with five tribes and families, a team of professionals from the United States Army Corps of Engineers Center for Expertise in Curation, with incredible support from the Carlisle Garrison, conducted the dignified disinterment of human remains from five grave sites at the Carlisle Barracks Post Cemetery. Tribes and family members of the deceased children collaborated with the Army over the past year in a detailed planning for this year's disinterment process, the dignified return of their children. This year, our findings allowed us to return four of five children scheduled for disinterment. On September 14th, the Army conducted the dignified disinterment of grave E-14, which historical records indicated belonged to a Puyallup child, Edward Spot, a 17 to 18 year old young man. Disappointingly, the remains recovered were found to be that of a female, approximate age of 16 to 22. The entire team was deeply saddened. We were unable to return Eddie to his family and tribal community at this time. I would like to take a minute and explain the challenges associated with the relocated, relocation of a cemetery, especially one relocated not more than 95 years ago. Each of the Native American and Alaska Native children who rest in the Carlisle Barracks Post Cemetery were buried between 1879 and 1910, the majority over 120 years ago. Candidly, moving a cemetery is not a good practice at any time. While we do not have the exact details of how the relocation was conducted, we are aware it was completed over the course of several weeks during the summer of 1927. Accountability and chain of custody, both of paramount importance in the management of human remains, was likely not as robust as it is today. And while we have been successful to date with the recovery and return of 32 children resting beneath the correct headstone, human error can occur. The Army is committed to once again reviewing all the available resources and seeking out new information that may help us identify any possible error that led to this anomaly so we can make the appropriate effort to return Edward to his Puyallup family and tribe. The unknown female was reinterred in a dignified ceremony on Saturday, September 16th with the caring and loving assistance and compassion of the Puyallup family. Human remains found in graves assigned to Lonnie Shorty, Blackfeet Nation, Bo Neal, Northern Arapaho Tribe, Amos Lafonbois, Sisseton Wapiton, Oyete, and Edward Upright, Spirit Lake Tribe, were biologically consistent with the information contained in their student and burial location records. Each child was returned to their tribe in a dignified ceremony, and many have already been reinterred in their native lands. We would like to thank each of the fa individual families and tribes for their tremendous strength, extraordinary patience, and their understanding during this emotional journey to return their loved ones. I would also like to thank my site manager, Mr. Chris Koenig, Dr. Alicia Winburn, and our talented staff for their professionalism, tireless dedication, and meticulous work. This year marks the sixth of this incredibly rewarding project. The Department of the Army has already received several completed requests for the return of multiple children in the coming years. We remain ready to work with tribes and families to return the remaining children in the Carlisle Cemetery. We offer assistance to any tribe in order to better understand the disinterment project and to complete the Army's request for disinterment so we return their children to their loved ones and native land. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. Koenig to discuss the archeological perspective of the project and Dr. Winburn to discuss the forensic analysis. Good morning, everyone. My name is Christopher Koenig and I serve as the Office of Army Cemeteries, uh, Senior Cemetery Administrator and Tribal Liaison. Uh, I'm responsible for assembling and directing the archeology span and forensic teams, in addition to the tribal and family liaison team associated with the disinterment project for this year. Before I begin, I would like to speak briefly about our extraordinary experience working with the families and individuals of the Blackfeet Nation, the Northern Arapaho Tribe, the Poyallup Tribe, the Sisseton Wapiton Oyate of the Lake Traverse Reservation, and the Spirit Lake Tribe. 
Each family member brought something vital to the project from various walks of life and geographic regions of our country. Compassion, dignity, and courage. This human experience will resonate with me far more than the technical aspects of this work. We are invested in returning the children from the Carlisle Barrack Cemetery to their final resting place. Now, my brief technical report on the forensic exhumation. Uh, this morning, I, I'll discuss three topics associated with the disinterments, team composition, findings, and summary. I'll start with team composition, which consists of four teams in total. First is the tribal and family liaison team, comprised of three tribal liaisons who oversee family coordination, tribal consultation, travel logistics, and ensure families on site are safe and comfortable. Their planning work began in the fall of last year up through the end of this year's effort today. Second is the site operations team comprised of three cemetery specialists from the Office of Army Cemeteries with support from Arlington National Cemetery. They oversee the site layout, manage all the equipment and ensure the security and privacy of the operation. Their work begins four months in advance through the end of the effort. Third is the excavation team comprised of four forensic archeologists. They are all longtime specialists in their field. They exhume the remains carefully to ensure none of the remains are damaged during the process and are safely transferred with dignity and respect to the forensic analysis team. And finally, the forensic analysis team comprised of three biological anthropologists with a board certified senior lead overseeing the work. They are all longtime specialists in their field. When the remains enter the forensic analysis lab, they are meticulously cleaned and analyzed. I will now discuss our findings from this year. Uh, first, to establish some context for our findings, I would like to walk you through the stages associated with these remains. At death, these children were buried in the original Bureau of Indian Affairs Cemetery, uh, where the Army War College now stands. During the initial burial period of that cemetery, there was diff differential decay of remains in their caskets. This happens in any cemetery. In 1927, the Army made the decision to move the original BIA cemetery. It's important to note that in 1927, in military and private cemeteries, there were no sophisticated transfer procedures or trained professionals to carry out this work. The graves were exhumed and the remains transferred to wooden containers, which were reburied in the cemetery you see here today. During the following 95 years, the remains again experienced differential decay. On September 11th of this month, four archeologists, three biological anthropologists, and two supervisory staff began the disinterment analysis of the remains. Five containers were identified, all uniform in size. The construction, fabrication, and placement of these containers showed consistency associated with good standardization. The containers in the graves were generally centered in a grave trench measuring 18 inches wide, four to five feet long, and it had been ex excavated to a depth of two to two and a half feet. The caskets were approximately two feet long, one foot wide, and 10 inches deep. The majority of the boxes containing the remains were centered in their respective graves. In summary, these secondary burials form a pattern that is consistent with 19th and early 20th century mortuary practices. I would like to thank our technical experts and the professionalism and support of all of our team. Finally, and most importantly, all of us are deeply grateful to have served all the family members who came seeking their loved ones this fall in an effort to provide a dignified recovery and return home. I will now turn it over to Dr. Winburn to discuss the forensic analysis process. Good morning. My name is Dr. Alicia Winburn and I'm a forensic anthropologist. Um, I am the consulting forensic anthropologist for the Carlisle Barracks Disinterment Program. I'm a diplomat of the American Board of Forensic Anthropology, an associate professor of anthropology at the University of West Florida, and the consulting forensic anthropologist for several medical legal agencies throughout Florida and Alabama. I'm consulting for the Army on this project. As a forensic anthropologist, I'm a specialist in interpreting human skeletal and dental remains. I use my knowledge of human variation in addition to standardized methods and protocols to examine the remains of deceased persons and draw conclusions about who they might have been in life. 
By examining traits like the length, shape, and development of their bones and teeth, I can estimate demographics like their age, sex, and height. Over the past two weeks, it was my great honor to serve the families and tribes of the children interred at Carlisle with my forensic expertise. My team and I had the privilege of examining the remains of the five children exhumed this season. Of them, we found that four of the children's remains were consistent with the documented demographics associated with the names on their headstones. They were Lonnie Shorty, a Blackfeet male, Bo Neal, a Northern Arapaho male, Amos Laframboise, a Sisseton Wapiton Oyate male, and Edward Upright, a Spirit Lake male. I am deeply sorry to report that my skeletal findings for one individual did not match the demographics for the child whose name was on the headstone, Edward Spot of the Puyallup tribe. Eddie was a male teen and the individual found beneath his headstone was an older teenage or young adult female whose identity currently remains unknown. My heart goes out to Eddie's family and I wish to assure them that we will continue to work not only to find and return Eddie, but also to identify the unknown female to whom they showed such kindness. I wish to extend my condolences and also my gratitude to the families and the tribes who waited so long and traveled so far to be with my team during our analyses of their loved ones. We will not forget you and we will not forget them. Thank you.